Hello, in this lecture we will talk about the creation of the financial statements and we will be able to summarize and describe the accounting cycle leading to the creation of the financial statements. Then we're going to create financial statements from an adjusted trial balance including the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of owner's equity. So the accounting cycle leading to the financial statements. So we're going to record and journalize financial transactions during the period uh, in accordance with the double entry accounting system. That's going to be the first part. So if we're talking about the beginning of the period on day one of the month of the year, then we're going to record the transactions throughout that time period, that month or year. We're going to pay the bills. We're going to enter the, the receipts and whatnot. Then uh, we're going to um, compile data in the form of posting transactions to the general ledger and create an unadjusted trial balance. So at the end of the time period, the month or the year, we will then have an unadjusted trial balance. Then we're going to take posting adjusting entries as of the end of the accounting period to arrive at the adjusted trial balance. We're going to take that, that raw trial balance. We're going to make adjustments to it. And those adjustments will include uh, adjustments for certain accounts that need to be adjusted in order to convert them to a perfect accrual basis as of the cutoff date, which will be the end of the year or the end of the month. Then using the adjusting trial balance to create the financial statements. That's where we're at now. Now we're going to take that adjusted trial balance, which we have now adjusted to be perfectly correct on an accrual basis as much as possible at least, in order to help us generate the financial statements. Now we're going to make the financial statements based on that adjusted trial balance. So creating the balance sheet. So here we have the balance sheet. Remember the balance sheet is as of a point in time. It is the accounting equation. We have assets, we have liabilities, we have owner's equity. We can see that this is the sheet that is the balancing portion of our, our statements, meaning that the assets will equal the liabilities plus the owner's equity. Our goal here is to take this format of the trial balance in terms of debits and credits, convert it from the format of debits and credits, meaning that I know it's in balance because the debits minus the credits equal zero in this case, meaning that the debits equal the credits. If that's the case, it's all we're going to do is take that puzzle, shuffle it around to a different format, meaning we don't want to show it in terms of debits and credits because we want to show it to somebody else who doesn't know debits and credits. Therefore, we need to convert it from debits and credits to a plus and minus format. We know it's just a puzzle. So if we take it from something that is in balance, put it into a plus and minus format, it must work. All we have to do is find a home for all these numbers here, somewhere over here, and make sure we have the signs going the correct way. So if we do that, then we're going to have assets. We can further break assets down to current assets and property, plant, and equipment. Current assets include cash, accounts receivable, uh, prepaid insurance supplies. Land is going to be property, plant, and equipment. Therefore, if we just take these accounts and we put them right here, then we're going to bring those into the left-hand side, and we're going to indicate that we're going to have a subcategory by a colon and an indentation, and then we're going to pull out the sum to the right-hand side. So if we add those up, we pull those out here, that's going to be the current assets. Then we have the uh, property, plant, and equipment which includes land, equipment, and accumulated depreciation representing a contra asset, meaning it's a negative number here, meaning it's a credit here, and it's going to be a subtraction here because it's representing the, uh, the subtraction or the reduction of the value of the equipment. And therefore, we got this plus this minus this equals this. If we were to add up all the assets here, and we added up the outer column here, we come up to uh, nine. I mean 792.9. So those are the total assets here, all of this minus that, then we go to the liabilities. We only have three liabilities, and therefore we've got uh, current liabilities. Once again, those are going to be liabilities that are paid within a year. And all we're going to do is copy these over here. we got wages, uh, accounts payable, wages unearned. We're going to have a colon. We're going to indent. We're going to pull them into the enter column. These are not debit and credit columns here. These are just meaning we're going to pull in uh, the subcategories here and sum them out to the right-hand side. So we have these items here. They're represented with brackets here because they're credits. We're not going to represent them with brackets over here. We're going to represent them in terms of, of a plus and minus. Therefore, they're just pot, they're just numbers here. So we got, if we sum these up, then this plus this equals the 38,150. Then we have the equity section. Now, there's only one account on the balance sheet for equity in terms of a sole proprietor, and that's going to be the owner, the owner's equity. That is what is owed to the owner. But notice that the account that is in there is not this number. This number is not what we're going to put here. Why is that? Why is it that the equity account we're going to call owner's equity, but that's not the number that is in there in order to make us balance? Because this is the beginning owner's equity on the trial balance. That's the confusing thing on the trial balance. This is as of 1231. That's the beginning owner's equity plus any investments that we made throughout the year. 
we need to add to that, which we will do in the next couple statements, the net income, which are all these numbers, and the draws, minus the draws. So if we were to look at this, if I summed this up, if I took this number and summed up this, minus this, plus this, minus this, minus this, minus this, minus this, minus this, that would bring us to this number, meaning that the equity is all the blue, remember? It's all the blue. So we could represent it right here, and that would be our statement. So then we'd have total liabilities and equity. Notice we're summing up the outer column here. We're not jumping from one column to another. In general, we never jump from one column to the other. We're only summing up the outer column, liabilities plus equity, uh, 972.9. Nine. Therefore, our assets equal our liabilities and owner's equity. It has to work out that way. Now, this number here, we need more detail on that number. I could just sum it up here and I get to that number, but we really want to calculate that another way. So I'm going to say we're going to get back to that number by calculating the income statement and the statement of owner's equity, which will take us to this number here. So in essence, we found a home now for all of these numbers on the balance sheet. And we, we sum these up into one number, but we want to find a home for them on another couple financial statements, being the income statement and the statement of owner's equity, instead of just lumping them into one number here. Next statement we look at then, the income statement. So the income statement, remember we found a home for all this on the balance sheet. We're now concentrating here on the income statement. And there's only two types of accounts really on the income statement. We either have revenue, income, or expenses. And oftentimes we only have one revenue account because we like do one thing. We do bookkeeping or whatever, one revenue account. Then we have a lot of expense accounts because that we have a lot of things that we pay out for. So the revenue, we don't need a subcategory because in this case we only have one account. So I'm just going to put that on the right-hand side. Again, that's not a credit in this area. It's just recognizing that we're going to, um, when we pull things into the left-hand side, we're subcategorizing, we're grouping them. So we don't need to do that because there's only one account for revenue. If there were more than one, we'd have to say revenue, pull it inside, subgroup it, and then add it out. So in this case, it's a credit. We're not going to represent it as a credit over here. It's just revenue. It's just a plus and minus number. So we got the, the credit, I mean, <laughs> the revenue here as a, as a positive number. Then we're going to have the expenses colon, and we're going to indent the expenses because we got more than one expenses. Of course, we got a lot of expenses. Then we're just pulling these numbers over here. Again, we're going to pull them into the inside because we're subcategorizing. Then we're going to sum them up to the outside. That's how the financial statements will generally work. Therefore, we're going to pull these numbers over. Again, these don't represent debits. They just are numbers here on this column because we're going to subcategorize them. Then we sum them up over here. We got the 249.90. Then, of course, the net income represents the income minus the expenses. Notice we're only going to do something to one column. There's a number above it. Therefore, we have to do something to this column. We're not going to jump from here to here. We're over here now, and therefore, we're going to have to sum up this number minus this number. Income minus the expenses gives us our net income. Now, you might be saying, well, why are these numbers yellow? That's because we're going to see that related to another financial statement. So that net income then means we found a home for all of this. And the only accounts we haven't really accounted for then is here, except we scrunched them up into the one number on the balance sheet, but we really need to break those out into another statement, which will be the statement of owner's equity. So the last statement we'll look at, statement of owner's equity. So now we're taking a look at the statement of owner's equity. Once again, we found a home for all of these on the balance sheet. We found a home for these on the income statement. Now we're basically concentrated on these two accounts are the ones that we haven't found a home for. The statement of owner's equity, we can see the first account on here is going to be called owner's capital account, which is this one here, except there's one minor detail on this, which is that we have it as of December 1st. Why? Because the end of the time period is December 31st, and this is measuring a time frame again. Therefore, uh, we're going to start off with the beginning of the period, December 1st. This number, uh, 667145, came from here. Once again, that's a credit. This doesn't represent a credit over here. This just represents that we are uh, putting in terms of plus and minus. So notice we're taking that number over here from here, but that only represents the beginning balance because this number right here, remember equity as a whole is all of this. So this is just a beginning balance plus any investments that we may have made throughout the time period. So we have that number here. Then we're going to pull inside the change to that number. The change to that number includes net income, which is all of this, which we just calculated on the income statement. So that's why it's yellow here because we're going to take that number and we're going to include that down here. So the, the equity is going to increase by all this blue stuff. It's going to change by all this other blue stuff, meaning net income is the sum of all this, which is calculated right here. 
Once again, it's a positive number. That's going to increase the equity. Then we're going to reduce it by draws, representing the money that got taken out by the owner. So the draws being here, that number is here. The, the net increase then from the beginning uh, through the time period is the income we made minus what the owner took out. Therefore, there's a net increase in equity of 87,605. Now we found a home for these two. Beginning equity plus all this stuff gives us the ending equity, which is now yellow because that is the amount that will be on the balance sheet. We can see that we have the equity account here, but now it's as of the end of the time period, the end of the time frame. So if we take a look at all these relationships as a whole, once again, we see that the balance sheet is everything. The balance sheet is where we are at as of a specific point in time. The balance sheet is the assets equal to liabilities plus the owner's equity. The balance sheet is the double entry accounting system. It is the accounting equation. And this number here is, of course, going to equal this number here. Then we've got the equity account, which represents the book value of the company, meaning we have this much of assets minus people we owe, meaning this is the book value. That's the worth of the company. And we only have one owner. Therefore, it's all that owner's worth therefore if we sold the business theoretically we can get this much cash if we sold all this pay these guys off and then walk away with this much money theoretically so then the question is well how did we get to there as of that point in time and in order to do that we can tell the story we created the income statement to tell us more about this number we can say well <clears throat> let's look one uh, month back in time well if we do that we had income here and then expenses here this number is part of of this number pause so we're going to have the statement of owner's equity. This number is going to be down here, also represented here with the beginning number here, plus the increase minus what the individual took out. That gives us our equity. So this equity is equal to this equity account here. We're getting the story basically behind this equity account.